What's up everybody, the Netricberg here. Hope you've been doing well. In this video, we'll be covering VPLS, that is BGP signals. So it is a bit of an advanced topic, but it's one of the cooler things that you can do. And also it is on Micritic. How awesome is that? Uh, before I jump into the video, I just want to remind you to subscribe to the channel, share the video, comment, like, share, all that wonderful stuff. And again, i like to thank you all for your support. So let's get into the video. All right, so what the heck is <laughs> VPLS? I've made a video on it before and I'll put a link in the description for it so you can just go have a look. I'll also put a few other descriptions in for prerequisites that you'll need before you can attempt this yourself, maybe on your own EVE lab. Um, but in essence, VPLS is a mechanism that works similarly to MPLS that allows us to span the layer two between different physical locations. So you could have two different actual sites and the customer could ideally be running the on, on the same LAN network, on the same broadcast domain, because you could be spanning their layer two VLANs and stuff over your VPLS. And it's really, really useful, especially in the data center where you might run two different data centers at two different locations, but you want them on the same IP range you can use VPLS uh, in order to achieve that. Um, you'd also maybe use VXLAN, but that isn't on Mikrotik yet. So <laughs> maybe one day we, we hope some people have asked for it, but for now we'll use VPLS. So how we're going to configure it, I've got some little core network here and the networks that I want you to focus on is my PE1, my PE2, and then I've got a special router that we call a route reflector. So the route reflector isn't really a requirement to run VPLS, but it, it takes away the requirement of having a fully meshed BGP network. So all your routers don't, or routers don't need to be connected directly with each other. Um, with the route reflector, all the routers could be connecting to the route reflector and establish their BGP session from there. And then you could deliver various BGP services through the route reflector, which is what we're going to be doing. Now, the example that I want to paint you is we have a customer, client two, and this customer wants to, to order VPLS through us so that they can have two different locations using the same LAN subnet, which is going to be 192.168.40.0 slash 24. Um, on the CPU, I've already done a bit of bridging and stuff, but we're going to do the actual setup on the provider network. So places we're gonna start is, we're going to log on to our PE1 and we're going to do some base configuration on there. So I'm going to go on PE1 and let's just close all our windows. And then first things first, uh, I want you to understand we want to create a BGP peer to the route reflector. Very important. You need a BGP peer to deliver this service. So we're just going to go into our routing, our BGP. And let's go into our peers. Let's add a peer. I'm going to call the peer peer to RR, which is the route reflector. My instance will be 6502, which is this AS. So all the routers have this AS configured. And you don't have to use AS 6502. You can use some other private AS or whatever your AS is that was given to you. Okay, so the remote address. So I've given the route reflector, a loopback address of 3.1.1.5. So we're going to use that to connect. Our remote AS will be the local AS. So it, it is basically like a, a IGP or it's I, IBGP. <laughs> um, we are not doing anything with the route reflector. We'll do that on the route reflector. I'm not gonna add anything else here but we do need to go into our advanced and then very important, we can even disable the IP because if you're doing this for just um, layer two, then you can use the L2 VPN function. But if you're gonna deliver other services, you could have IP or VPN for or, or that stuff ticked, but we're just going to use L2 VPN for this. And our update source is going to be our loopback address, which in my case should be the, the LO0. Let me just make sure 3113, that's correct. And I'm going to apply that. Great, so now I've got a peer to the route reflector. Let's just delete that old one. And I'm going to jump onto the PE2 now as well. 
So let's see on PE2, similar setup. Actually, I might just do that through the Winbox quickly or, or through the command line, sorry. So admin blank routing BGP, routing BGP peer print. Let's just see, do I still have a peer there? Let's just export this. No. So we're going to go routing BGP peer, add name peer to RR, our destination or our remote address will be 3.1.1.5. Our remote AS is equals uh, 65002. Our address family, which is important, is L2 VPN. Our instance is the 6502, but I've made it that. And is there anything else I want? Nothing specifically, so this looks fine. So let's just add our peer. So now I've got two peers to the route reflector but now I need to do the configuration on the route ref reflector. So I'll just quickly do that on Wimbox. So let's open up another session, connect to Ramon, and I should have the RR here, so I'm connecting. And from the route reflector, let's just quickly add an instance for this, call it AS6502, the AS is 65502, router ID 3115. And it's important that client to client reflection is ticked. It is ticked by default, but just make sure. Let's apply that. And let's connect our peers. So our peers will be peer to PE1. Our instance will be AS65002, remote address of 3.1.1.3, remote AS65002. And route reflect, we need to tick on the route reflector, the router that's going to kind of like distribute the servers where service where all of the other routers are connecting to and that's fine I need to go into advanced just take the L2 VPN and set the update source and I can apply this so our peers should actually establish perfect it has and let's quickly do the same from the command line so I'm going to go into my RR let's just maximize that and we're going to go routing BGP peer add name peer to PE2 remote or remote AS is 65002 remote address is going to be 3.1.1.4 our instance will be the AS 65002 our address families is L2 VPN. Our update source is LO, LO0. And our last but not least is the route reflect, which we are going to enable. Somewhere I didn't specify something correctly. Oh, the update source. Let's try that. There we go. It was a capital O. Honest mistake. So let's see is our routing BGP peer print. Both of them is established. That's perfect. We can also just do a status to verify all the details. So PE2 is connected, PE1 is connected. So we've got BGP peers from our PEs, which is where the client links come into, which are our route reflector. So now we're gonna start actually with the VPLS signaling and this we can do quickly through Winbox and command line. So I'll go into my PE1 first for the Winbox. First thing we want to do is just add a bridge. And the bridge we will call VPLS Cust2. Apply that. Oh, we also just want to disable the STP. Just make that none. And from the bridge, we're going to go to our ports and we're going to find the port that is actually going to our customer. This could have been a VLAN, but in my case, it's just a straight connection on Ethernet 5. So Ether 5, I'm going to put in the VPLS bridge. And I'm going to apply that. Now that we have the bridge, we need to go into our MPLS, VPLS, 
BGP VPLS, hit the plus. The name, we can just call this cust to VPLS again. Our route distinguisher, so make this unique for your customer. So this is for customer two, so I'll just make this one colon two. Import routes, I'll make the same, and export routes, I'll make the same. Site ID, so this is very important. So as opposed to normal VPLS where this kind of like matches on both of the remote routers, this is going to be unique on your router. So PE1, I'll just leave a site ID one. The bridge I'm going to select is the VPLS underscore customer two. And I'm not gonna set anything else. I can set a bridge horizon, but I'm not going to. So let's just apply that. And that is the signaling done on one side. <laughs> but since it's signaling, we need a different side since it's kind of like making a connection through the BGP. So let's go on to PE2 through the command line now. And similarly, we are just going to go interface bridge, add the bridge, the name cust2 underscore VPLS, and the protocol mode was none. We're going to go interface bridge port add and our interface will be ether5 again which is the same on the pe2 let me just show you again so pe2 is ether5 going to this customer cpe2 and the bridge we're going to use is the vpls bridge great so we've added the bridge now we just need to do the bgp signaling to do this, we go VPL uh, interface VPLS BGP v dash VPLS add. We can give it the name, so VPLS underscore cus two. I, I actually think I swapped it around the first time around, but it's fine. Um, and we are going to need our route distinguisher, which is one dash two or colon two. Our import route one colon two, our export one colon two, and we need our bridge, which is cus two VPLS. And the site ID, again, this is unique for the BGP VPLS, which I'm going to make two since this is PE two. And is there anything else I want? It doesn't seem like it, I'll just hit enter. And I've added that. Now let's see if the VPLS signal is actually working. So we can go interface, VPLS print, hit enter. And you see we're getting an RDB. So that is <laughs> that is a dynamic um, routing and it's through the BGP. So it is, oh, it's running. It's through the BGP and it's actually working. It's, it's, it's there. So awesome. That's actually pretty cool. Let's go into Winbox and just verify from there so you can have a clearer picture. There you go. DRSB. So that's actually like slave, I think. Yes. So that's the slave. And if we go to our interfaces, you'll see it created this dynamic VPLS interface. So it was signaled dynamically. It created us that interface now when it was signaled through the BGP. Cool. Now let's test and see if this actually works. So I've got two customer routers, CPE1 and CPE2. Let's just quickly jump in them, admin blank. And then what I want you to take note of is, and this, this is actually the cool bit that I did as well. I've added VRRP through the VPLS network. So dot one is running on a VRRP interface that is shared between the two routers. Dot two is this router on the right hand side and dot three is this router on the left hand side. Now let's just first see, can I ping 192.168.40.2? I can, and that's through the VPLS. So what we can do to do a better test is maybe just jump on one of these PCs. And I'm logging in quickly. So if I go into my system tools, my terminal, Let's just see, do I have an IP address assigned? Not yet. So let's just quickly assign an IP IF config ETH zero. Let's give it the IP address of 192.168.40.10 with the mask of 255.255.0. And let's just do a route add default gateway. It's going to be 192.168.40.1. So this is this PC20. 
and it's going to use the dot one, which is on the VORP interface as its default gateway. So let's see, can we ping that address 40.1? We can, and let's do the same thing on the other PC, give it uh, the IP of dot 11 maybe, and see if the two PCs can get to each other, which I'm pretty confident it can, but it's better to test and make sure it is actually working. So let's do IF config. Uh, ETH zero, give it the IP 192.168.40.11 with the mask of 255.255.255.0. I'm not even going to add a default gateway now because technically it's all on the same broadcast domain. So if I do a ping 192.168.40.10, I get a response. So that is two different locations now, but they're all on the same LAN range. That is really, really cool. Um, I just want to show you on the CP kind of what the config looks like. So if we go into our interface bridge and we print that, or let's look at our port specifically, interface bridge port, print detail. What I want you to take notice of is the ether one, which is the actual uplink to my provider edge and my ether two I've bridged together so that I can essentially have the LAN network of the customer come across into my provider network. So I don't do any BGP signaling from the customer CP or anything. Um, everything is happening on my provider network as the ISP. Cool. So what we've covered now is VPLS using BGP signaling. I hope it's been informative. I know it might be a bit hectic, but again, there is a few prerequisites before you can get this running in your own lab. I might do this in a stream again. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.